So last year, right around this time, I made a video called Don't Buy Macallan. Um, and I still basically stand by everything I said. And I did get some, some facts wrong, uh, corrected in the comments, involving the 12-year-old, which we're going to talk about. Um, but basically, everything I said, I could say again, I could run the same video. Um, I might change the title if I could think of anything better, because people kind of went in thinking I was going to say McCallum bad, and that's what I wanted to say, that McCallum was bad. Whereas that was not what I was saying, and I insist on this fairly strongly. I was saying the price is bad, that uh, McCallum as a distillery is, is now currently charging people, you know, two, maybe sometimes three times as much money for the quality that they're getting as they really have any right to. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I also kind of regret, uh, well, not regret, but I, I would have changed maybe some of the whiskeys I use, added more. Um, then that video, I was, I was trying some Glendronach and some Everlauer, which are perfectly fine, but you know, um, I might have added in some uh, Bunahaban. I might have thrown in some, uh, uh, some Glen Goyne, maybe, um, Mortlock. Um, lots of lots of options as far as you know, whiskeys you can get for less than than Macallan money that are better than Macallan. But the third regret I have, and this is this is what the video is about, is that I didn't actually taste any Macallan in the video, and that seems a little bit unfair. I feel like you know if I'm going to be dunking on the distillery for you know just not being a very good value, I should you know at least go the distance of actually trying some of the stuff. So that's what I want, what would wanted to do with this. Um, but I thought it was I, I it would be just kind of sad and depressing if you know I just worked through one of the Macallan twelves for twenty minutes and complained about it. Like that's I don't I don't want to do that. I imagine you don't want to watch that because that's just you know what what, what I'm going to say. So so instead I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, a, a sample a recent sample of theirs. Uh, along with some older Macallans that I just happened to have in the archives I pulled out. So uh, what I got here to taste is uh, a one of the modern 12-year-olds. Not the... Uh, so the sh one of the, both the 12-year-olds are, are sherry matured, entirely sherry matured. But this is not the one that says sherry cask on it, or traditional cask, or whatever the hell they're saying. Uh, this is the double cask, which is also sherry matured. It's just the one that uses some American oak with, that are, that's sherry saturated rather than just the spanish european oak it the branding is a mess um so we're, we're going with the mccallan 12 year old double oak this is a sample i bought with my own monies uh it does say natural color on it which is nice um uh and we're i'm gonna put that up against some older stuff so this is a, a very very old not that old but pretty old independent bottling from 1990 bottled in uh 2004, 14 years old, uh, matured in sherry cask. This is from McGibbon's Provenance, which is uh, a slightly more obscure independent bottler. I grabbed this a couple of years ago and figured, why not, why not try it out? Um, and then as a last option, an official bottling, this is a Macallan cast strength 10-year-old um, uh, that I, I uh, bought for a tasting that I ran about 10 years ago. So this is probably a, a, circ, a bottling circa 2010 uh, at 59.3% alcohol. So what we're going to do is just taste through these, give them some scores. And the reason I bring out these, these, these older bottles is not to give you FOMO. That's not what I want. I, I don't want you, you know, hunting down dusties or going to the auction sites. Do not go to the auction sites. Don't do it. Don't, the point here is much more just to make, to awares you of what the distillery is capable of, what it should be doing, so that, um, you know, maybe you have a little bit of respect for the cast, for the past, and you hold the place responsible for what it's doing now. In other words, you know, if you love McAllen, and if you're impressed by these older op offerings, and you should be, um, don't buy it. Wait for them to clean up their act. All right, let's go through these. Interesting differences in color. All right, so first off is the uh, contemporary McAllen double cask. 
I did have the, this open last night to kind of air out, so it should have had a chance to, um, you know, kind of unwind itself. All right, bottled circa 2020, 43% natural color. Again, kudos. I have to give credit for that. On the nose. Okay, so it's uh, we're getting kind of a vague, but perfectly decent kind of sherry cask driven kind of nose. There's some lots of dried fruit, prunes, figs, uh, some black pepper in here. But then there's this this other note in here, which is kind of my the bane of of, of contemporary Macallans for me. It's this kind of note of sweet raisins mingled with a kind of almost a sweet and low thing, like a saccharine sweetness, which is something I associate with PX casks. I think there's a fair amount of, of PX or maybe Muscatel, I'm not sure, dessert cherry um, going into this mix. It's not, it's not ruining the nose by any means, but it, it, it is kind of like, it's, it's making it a hair bit unbalanced for me. Some honey, clover honey. Uh, a little bit of maltiness, a little green apple, some uh, some orange, like a Grand Marnier note. English breakfast tea. Uh, a little like uh, old leather, maybe. A cinnamon stick in there. It's nice. It's a nice nose. Again, it's it's a little bit kind of just vague, generic -y sherry note, and it doesn't have that um, slightly saccharine, raisiny character to it. That is not my favorite thing. Oh, it's getting a little bit musty now. A little like uh, kind of soggy barrel. Okay, um, on the palate. Oh. So the nose is fine. The nose is up there with, you know, the Aberlauers and stuff. The palate is where the problems start to creep in. Um, even more vague uh, than on the, way more vague than on the nose. Black pepper, kind of dried flowers, dried fruit again. So the, the same kind of things, um, prunes, figs, that kind of, that kind of stuff. And that, that PX note is actually getting in the way a little bit more, the, um, or what I imagine would be the PX note, the, the, the kind of sweet, ra the, the raisins smothered and sweet and low, that kind of thing. But the problem, ooh, the problem much more is the mouthfeel, the way it behaves in the mouth. This is extremely short in the mouth. It is not even making its way back to my molars. Everything is happening in front. Um, and the finish, it's not a short finish, but it's, it's kind of awkward. It's kind of like on like old, like soggy tea leaves, that soggy barrel thing again, leather, but like not light, nice leather, lots of pepper, which I'm fine with. Um, yeah. And that mixed with that sweet and low thing. Slightly, I want to say cardboard, but it's not cardboard. It's um, almost paper mache, something like that. A little touch of fennel in there for fun. Um, that's kind of it. Uh, good nose. Arrival's fine, but on the finish, it, it really, and then on the mouthfeel, it really starts to fall apart. But hey, um, let's give this another chance. We'll add some water to it, come back to it after the other two like four drops. See if that opens it up a little. All right. So now we're going to do the uh, McGibbons Provenance. Um, I don't know even know if this bottler or the people behind it are still around, but uh, it was around in sort of the the the, uh, the second Bush era. Uh, this is a 1990, so bottled in June 1990, uh, or distilled um, June 1990, bottled August 2004, bottle at 46%. Uh, unchill filtered, artisanal, no coloring. Great. Um, and I can't, the, the cast is a little bit weird. A bottling from one cask, GMG, 
REF893. Uh, that doesn't really sound like a, a cast number, but uh, maybe it is. I, anyways, that's what I got. That's uh, I, I, I bought this um, from Binnie's like probably a decade ago from just some bottom shelf dusty. It does have a cool box though. Look at this. It's like it's like um, hexagonal, a hexagonal box. Anyways. Nifty. Um, all right, let's get some notes. On the nose. Interesting. So, um, f it's 14 years old. From the color, and again, it's natural color, I assume this is a first fill cask. Or pretty fresh. But, um, it smells much, much younger than it is. Like, I'm, it's, it smells more like the... I'm getting sherry notes, but I'm also just getting kind of a raw spirity note in here. The Macallan distillate is creeping its way in. So, and the two are kind of running in parallel rather than kind of marrying. Um, this is 14 years old going on like nine, maybe eight or nine. So possibly a sherry, butt. I'm not sure. Larger cask, uh, less, less interaction. So I'm getting it like leaf. It's it's very leafy. There's some, you know, like fresh, wet forest leaves. Dried cherry, slightly gunpowdery sherry cask. No PX in this. No no dessert stuff. No sweet and low. Yeah, kind of, kind of a gunpowdery. Not really sulfury, but gunpowdery. And the, but then it's running up against the Macallan distillate, and that's that, it's fun to have something like this in the tasting because. Macallan distillate is very interesting and not pretty, but but usefully so. I mean, this is what I'm getting is a distillate that's very grassy, like burned grassy, fennel, herbaceous, um, other yeah, fennel and other herbs, cider apple, like um, sour apple. And just kind of a, like a, a, a smoky, oily note. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's, uh, I want something, I want to say something like you put some, maybe like a very refined coconut oil in, in the hot pan or something, that kind of smoke, but it's not, it's, it's more like you're, you're smelling it, but then like some, some, some oil and then someone is, is has like a campfire going outside, that kind of note. And um, this is kind of what makes Macallan work. It's not, it's not a pretty nice, fresh uh, distillate. It is oily and heavy and herbaceous and unfriendly, and that is what allows it to age so long. Um, this, I mean, you 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 smell this, and right away you get the sense this this cask could have gone twice as many years. It could have gone, could have gone twenty eight years, thirty years with no problem, like because the the character. I'm sorry, there's a bit of um, cork in here because the cork on this broke. Um, the character of the distillate is is quick to, to hold up to cask influence for that long. Um, so, I'm sorry, back to the back, back to the nose and the notes and stuff. Uh, some black tea in here, black, black tea leaves. Ground pepper, a little cream of wheat. And well, it smells, you know, kind of like Kind of like sherry, like a good Amontillado. On the palate. Better than the um, the official bottling, by a lot. Um, kind of follows from the nose. It's, uh, uh, so again, you have the, the cask and the distillate kind of running in parallel. There's a little more integration than there was on the nose, but not a whole lot. Again, feels like at 14 years, this feels young. Um, uh, again, the sort of wet leaves with dried grass. Fennel, again, you get a, I always get a lot of fennel on, on young McCallans. Cork. Campfire ash. Lots of oiliness. This is, there's a, like a Viognier sort of character to this. Black pepper, 
gunpowder, black pepper and, and gunpowder mingled together. Um, sherry, just, you know, Amontillado again. Um, kind of a golden raisin note. Very spicy. There's a, like a kind of a, a curry powder thing going on. What is that? It's nutshells, but it's, it's like green nutshells. It's like unroasted nutshells. Uh, dried cherries. Um, and then, uh, what is that? It's like halfway in between like black tea and espresso. So you're, you sort of have, take your shot of espresso and you, 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 uh, you dump it into your black tea, that kind of thing. Um, slice of sour apple in there too. A little, little maltiness, but like, you know, that kind of McCallany ugly maltiness, herbaceous maltiness, oily maltiness. It's nice, nice enough, but I cannot stress. 14 years old, this feels like a baby. Um, which is, I mean, just speaks to the quality of the distill and how good it can be. Um, when it is really good. And how long this stuff can go in cask. Um, and that's not true of a whole lot of malts. Um, most distillates just don't have the character to hold up to heavy sherry maturation for, you know, 14 years, much less 28, but this one could have gone that long. All right. And finally, the, uh, the third item in our, in our set, this is a, uh, uh, McAllen cast strength, 10 year old, Circuit, bottled circa 2010 um, at 59.3% alcohol. Um, so McAllen started doing the uh, uh, some cast strength bottle. Well, not, not cast strength. It was like a 100 proof bottling. So 57% alcohol in, in British proof terms um, in the 90s. And uh, it was a little bit crazy because no one in the 90s was drinking anything. Unless, unless you were a maniac, you weren't drinking... Uh, whiskey that hot. Um, so it was really a sort of gift to the nerds. It's as if McAllen recognized the value of having, you know, the aficionados, the nerds on their side uh, at the time. Uh, and boy, did that help uh, when when uh, Michael Jackson, the reviewer, started pushing heavy on the McAllen 18 and 25. So the, the brand blew up. They were sort of at the top of the heap when whiskey got popular. And suddenly they decided they didn't need the the nerds love anymore. So right as the as the uh, the fine oak series was starting to pick up, you know maybe 10, 12 years ago, the uh, the cast strength got dropped. And this is one of the pro I, I presume one of the last bottlings of it. Um, anyway, so let's let's see what, see what we got here. Um, on the nose, a very different beast from either of the first two. Um, so I would be remiss not to mention we're still getting a little hints of, of what I think is, is PX cask um, maybe most dessert cherry cask so this sort of raisins and, and sweet and low sweetness but not too much and it's totally overwhelmed by everything else going on there's a lot going on here cinnamon all the cinnamon cardamom, allspice, clove Lots of clove. Uh, all dr all sort of dropped on top of prunes, dates, dried cranberry, dried cherry. Um, cigar wraps, like Mexican Maduro cigar wraps. Uh, like just, just heavy, heavy tobacco notes. Leather. Um... Something lightly floral in there too. There's like like you know, one flower, one rose sticking out of this, or maybe like one piece of Turkish delight. Actually, the Turkish delight made me think of Turkish coffee. That is the nose on this. Okay, so if you go to Istanbul, uh, what you want to do is you want to go to the marketplace and you, you so there there are guys fall, uh, wandering around with trays of Turkish coffee. Follow them after they deliver the Turkish coffee to the shop, to the, the locals, the, the, the shopkeepers and stuff. Follow them back to the coffee shop. That is where you buy your Turkish coffee. And it smells like this. It's coffee, but it has this kind of 
green note, uh, uh, this perfumed green note, married to like this kind of spiced note, and it's it's very distinctive, and it's all over the place in this. Also, a little bit of black tea. Um, no, not black, like Russian caravan tea. So a little bit of a little bit of oolong in there, a little bit of lapsang. Balance. Um, slightly raw maltiness. Um, uh, just, I mean, straight up like malt. You're nosing it. And dark chocolate as well. Um, it's a very nice nose. But the thing about Macallan is it really isn't so much a nosing whiskey as, as like a palate whiskey. That, it's on the palate where this stuff always shines. And here we go. On the palate. Oh. It makes me want to cry because they don't make stuff like this anymore. Oh, God, that's good. I, I like the nose, but the palate is just another another two levels up. Again, you, okay, so again, the, the PX notes are there. You have that little sweet and, uh, or the, the kind of sweet and low raisiny thing, but it's way in the back, balanced against toasted nutshells, cigars, all the cigars. Just like take five cigars from around the world and just put them in your mouth and chew on them. Um, piles of pepper, like ground pepper, figs, prunes, masses of dried fruit, long peppery finish, cinnamon stick, you know, being shoved directly into my mouth, cloves, cardamom, nutmeg, um, leather, but nice leather this time. I'm enjoying the leather, but like I'm chewing on a saddle or something and it's great. Um, Oh, more Turkish coffee, lots of Turkish coffee, more Christmasiness, you know, the, the, the spiciness, the Christmas spice. Um, God, there's like a, a, like a musty basement kind of thing. There's almost like a, like a, like a basement mushroom kind of note going on. Orange zest, Darjeeling tea, um, not really fennel. It's more like black Twizzlers. Um, this is a terrific palette. Uh, good night. I mean, this this wipes the floor with the other two, and I, I kind of like the second one, uh, uh, even though it comes off as young. All right, one more try with this. Magnificent whiskey. If you ever get hold of uh, Michael Jackson's old books and you're kind of like raising your eyebrow at uh, his, you know, poetic waxing about Macallan. He's talking about this. This is the stuff he's talking about. Um, and it's justified. I mean, you try this and you immediately get the sense that, I mean, let me take a step back. No, oh God, one more squirt. That is a big whiskey. Um, so we've all kind of thought that all of the wood engineering, wood technology of the last, what, five plus years-ish is everyone just trying to chase after George T. Stagg and um, Pappy Van Winkle. And that's true to some extent, but you taste something like this and you immediately get, oh, right, everyone is also trying to chase after old school Macallan. This is what they're trying to, when, when you, uh, when you buy your bottle of cast strength bourbon that's been finished in three or four different casks and they're just pounding wood on top of wood on top of wood, this feels like the profile they're aiming at, um, if that makes sense. What makes it work in this case and makes it not work in a lot of other cases is the character, again, the distillate. You can, this feels, this cast strength, uh, 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 feels like it could it could even go longer. I think they're using a lot more active casts than the uh, the Providence here. 
I, I think they're using more hogsheads. Um, but even then, the, the distal is coming out, the, the Twizzlers, the herbaceousness, um, the kind of oily, smoky thing. All of that's still coming out in here, giving me the sense that, hey, this thing could, could easily go, you know, to 15 or 20. Um, terrific whiskey. Um, all right, but let's go back through these one more time. Uh, all right, back to the, uh, the current 12-year-old double cask. Now with uh, half a squirt of water in it. This is going to be a bit of a gear shift. Um, okay. You can see a family resemblance, but man, this is a step back. Uh, again, kind of, kind of vague sherry. There's more pepper, more English breakfast tea, but also more, more of the, that sort of sweetie, raisiny, sweet and low thing. A little more floral too. I mean, again, I have to say this is a nice nose. This is a perfectly nice nose uh, on this uh, official 12 year old double cask. But again, I mean, the, the nose on this was not my issue with it. Um, so let's go to the palate. Oh. I mean, it mostly just kind of gets thinner um, with water. Oh, and the finish is maybe even a little bit more off. It's certainly not any less off. It's extending maybe a hair bit more back in my mouth. There's some more sort of Amontillado kind of, kinds of notes coming through, just straight up sherry. Um, not Amont, like a cream sherry. It's a little bit sweeter than that. Actually, this has gotten quite sweet since I added water to it. Malted milk balls, uh, cough syrup. I don't like the finish at all. Just kind of cream sherry soaked cardboard is what I'm getting. I mean, it's kind of okay. I would give this, I wouldn't score this into the 70s. It's not, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not great. It's certainly not great. Not, a, not even close. Um, for the price, I mean, okay, just to give you some some sense of comparison, this is around a full bottle of this little sample guy would be around seventy to eighty dollars, and back in the day, this cast strength was also priced at around seventy to eighty dollars. You, you, you see the problem here, um, and for and these days, for the same seventy or eighty dollars, you can buy you know two probably two bottles of Glengoyne 10, which is better than this. Um, let me try this, try it one more time. I mean, it just feels like they've stretched their batch about as far as, it, I mean, you, you try this and you immediately get a sense for the difference of like making a batch from hundreds of barrels versus like thousands of barrels. Um, this feels just kind of smoothed over. Um, I would give this, uh, I mean, I want to give this a score, but I want to give it more character than that. I want, I, I would give this an 82 out of a hundred. Uh, also, I'm also going to throw in a person shrugging emoji followed by the, the, the money with the wings flying away emoji. Um, yeah, just if if you want good Macallan, do not buy this. Uh, I mean, if or if you want good Macallan at the sort of value with with a reasonable sort of value proposition, do not buy this. Wait, you know, hold off. Wait, you know, and just wait until they they get back on their game. Um, all right, moving on to the uh, McGivens Provenance, fourteen year old. So I said this 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 came across as young um, when I tried it before. Let's try it again now. On the nose. Ah, with water. Now the cast starts to dominate a little bit. Or maybe well, let me, okay. I was gonna say because it it smells like straightforward Oloroso cask stuff now. Some Ovaltine, which I like. 
vanilla. Maybe that maybe this this was like an American oak bud or something. There's actually a, a, a fair bit of vanilla coming through. But also there's this huge sense of like oiliness and that's that the smoky oiliness thing and that's the that's the dissolute still trying to fight back. Good nose, but again, McAllen ain't about the nose on the palate. Oh, that's good. Okay. Again, we're getting a more, more on the Oloroso kind of note. But, I mean, the pepper, the the oiliness, the the grassy kind of thing, the herbs are still there. Actually, the pepper is stepping up quite a bit. There's some apple core in the finish. Um, like you just start chewing on an apple core. Um, Water improves the mouthfeel. There's a little bit, again, it, it makes it feel like this is more integrated than than initially. Um, I'm enjoying this. I'm going to give this, oh, what would I give this? It still feels a little bit young uh, at 14 years old again. Um, so I'm going to give this an 85 out of 100 followed by a, like a baby emoji. Why not? Because it's kind of a baby still, even though it's 14. Um, okay. And back to the cast strength. You know, when I, when I uh, initially tried this stuff uh, 10 years ago for the tasting, I don't remember enjoying it this much. And it may just be because my palate was changed, uh, has changed, or, you know, like, I just don't get to try stuff like this um, often anymore. Um, but I think maybe it was just bottle aging in this little sample bottle I got, um, because this is better than I, way better than I remember it being. This was like a 88 before, and it's not going to be an 88 now. Okay, so on the nose, the uh, even it's it's really even more Christmassy, you know, with the cinnamon and stuff, and more sort of Turkish coffee driven. It's so Turkish coffee. Um, very smoky, peppery too. But otherwise, you know, the base, same basic components are still there. It's, it's uh, God, it's terrific. Um, oh, the tobacco and the, and the dried fruit and the spiciness. Oh, it's a delight. But, you know, the show here is on the palate frankly. So let's go to that. Ooh. Oh, God, that's good. Oh, there's a development. So my initial ooh was because this actually gets a little sour with water. There's a little bit of, um, of a tartness that comes through. Oh, it, it's, it's wonderfully poised on the arrival. There's like a spicy sweet, sh sour, oloroso, um, you know, dried fruit, tobacco-y, leathery thing. And then it just dries your whole mouth. It just rips your mouth out with black pepper and wood tannins and leather and cigar. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Bam! Black pepper everywhere. Covering my entire mouth. Oh god, that's good. Um, sherry, Christmas, cigars, forever. This is terrific stuff. Um, and it, it makes me smile, but it also makes me cry that, again, this doesn't exist anymore. You know, um, this is a 90. This is 90 points out of 100. Followed by, you know, the, the smiley face with the tear? Uh, so 90, 90 points with the, smi the smiling tear face emoji. Um, and that's the roundup. So, I mean, respect to uh, McAllen for even getting this far, right? I mean, this is, it says natural color. Uh, or, you know, 
Natural color, that's great. Um, the Fine Oak series has is dead, and thank God for that. Um, they are using, so far as I can tell, all sherry maturation again. Great. Um, they've even put out the, uh, the the classic cut, which is a slightly slightly stronger version. Only problem being, it's more expensive and weaker and younger uh, than uh, the cast strength here, the old cast strength. But these are still positive changes. We're we're heading roughly in the right direction. And all I would ask from consumers watching this, if you've made it this far, at my dissing, you know, dissing current McAllen and and waving the flag for old McAllen, is if you're interested in old McAllen, just stop buying the current stuff. Wait for them to try to get this back. That's that's the message. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. So we got 82 with uh, what was it? Like a uh, 82 out of 100 with the. Uh, the shrug and the, the the money flying away. We have an 85 out of 100 uh, with the baby, and we have a 90 with a smiley tear face. And uh, that's my review. That's my you know follow up to the don't buy McAllen video. And I'm done. I'm out. Hope this was helpful and educational. Bye.